who say they want a man who ain't got no them women don't really want a man who ain't got no <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying no. like for real no bro fuck. like just think about a man who ain't got no and that oh. energy and how that is and how that feels Not, and what it look like think about that time that's what attract you to that nigga cause he had bitch, that energy that that misogyny yes, you sir. speak so poorly of yes, sir. that shit provides a vibe that you are obviously attracted to a sense of comfort it put out pheromones yeah. You understand yeah, me? And them pheromones cause you to be attracted. And I'm not saying that it's right to be this way or wrong to be this way. I'm just saying it's a fact that it is this way. Is that way. I'm not trying to excuse, merely explaining to you. Mm. Um, you make a valid point, my I mean, like, for real, because you get, I've seen all too many times a woman get a man and she's attracted to this man because... You know, he's a popular guy and he, he has options. Don't nobody want nobody with no options. Mm -hmm. So he has options. You dig what I'm saying? And she's attracted to him. And her main thing is, I want you to cut off all your options. I want to be your only option. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to be your only option. I want you to go to having all the options you want and everything that you can have in the world. And I want you to divert your efforts, energy, love, affection, and attention to only me and be your only option. And he say, you know what? For love, for you, I will. Boom. Collapse all his options. <laughs> hey, I do a joke about this. <laughs> Don't answer this. Hey, hey, hey. This is the Antisocial Socialite back at it again. Shout out to all of you wonderful returning friends and new subscribers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are new to the channel or you have not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for, darling? Hit that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell. So when I get to running this mouth, baby, you are in the loop. You see the title, you know what time it is. T.I. says women don't want a guy unless he has other women. Now, when I came across this video, I immediately had to agree. And the reason why I had to agree is because it's unfortunate that we live in a slightly warped world, okay? And what TI is saying is easy to be misconstrued, but there is a truth and a point to what he's saying on a biological level. Women want to know that the man that they have is desirable on a biological level, and they use other women as a guide of how desirable how um, attractive, how sexually appealing, or how much he has characteristics that she would want, they use other women as a measure for which man to zone in on. Women are more likely to be followers, women are more likely to be a groupthink type entity. And so they look to one another to follow in a trend. So when a man is singled out by a group of women they have consensus that that man has some value whether it's true value whether it's genuine masculinity or warped masculinity or what we would call hyper masculinity which is something a lot of thugs use but it's actually feminine energy but that's a different conversation for a different video regardless of whether the man has genuine masculinity or only perceived masculinity women like to use the judgment of other females as a guide as to whether or not this man is worth pursuing. Now he went on to say that women like the man to cut off all his options for her and I do believe that men even when they have a lot of options around them when they do find a woman that fits them the right way they are willing in most cases to cut off all other females. So when he said that when he finds the person that he really wants to be with, he's like, that's not a problem to be monogamous or whatever. I do believe that's a real thing. Now, shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. He recently put up a video of a lady saying that a lot of women want a man to cut off all his women, but actually that woman does not have what it takes to fill the place of all the women that he has in his life. And this is also a very true statement because at the end of the day, 
when you go into a committed relationship obviously over here we promote marriage we encourage people to wait until marriage we encourage people to have their children in wedlock so we're trying to change the culture change the attitude and the mentality in the black community by encouraging people to try and get it right the first time okay when you get into a committed relationship like this you have basically asked the person to give up all of their options and you have elected to be the person's sole source of supply when it comes to love, support, emotional support, maybe financial support, you know, you are their biggest cheerleader, you are their backup, you are the team, you are everything. You know, you have a duty, especially if you are married, to, to satisfy your spouse's, you know, not just emotional needs, but their sexual needs. We all know the scripture says, that your body doesn't belong to yourself if you're the woman it belongs to the man and if you're the man it belongs to the woman does that mean that your, your spouse has the right to take advantage of you obviously not but what it's saying is if you are married you are contractually obligated to satisfy your spouse's need and that's something you need to talk about and discuss before you say I do so you guys know you guys are on the same page okay so this lady, I came across her video on the same day. It was so funny. And let's hear what she has to say about the idea hey, of bar a man 65, who doesn't so, have any options. Uh, uh, let me go ahead and show you who this man is. Say cheese. Cheese. Oh. So I'm not saying he's ugly or you know what I mean. But I'm literally telling you no one in my city wants him. Literally, no one. Like, um, I have yet to go through his phone and see him get a response. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not jealous or insecure to where I gotta, like, be mad if he heart another girl picture because, like, bitches be pretty. You know what I mean? So he'll probably respond with a heart and then just leave him on scene. Like, will not respond. And I'll just be like, damn, does nobody want this man but me? Are you serious? You dead ass? So, yeah. That can't be an option. Um, he's always sitting in my face. Okay, so we hear again the lady is saying nobody wants this man. Now, I think she's talking mainly about looks. You know, she's talking about his physical appearance. And that's not the biggest indicator or issue here. The thing about it is this. A man who is desirable back in the day used to actually have attributes that made him worth being with. And this is where T.I. statement can suddenly stray off into a dangerous place. Just because a lot of women find you desirable doesn't mean that you're a good or a quality man. It doesn't mean to say that you have anything going on in your life that makes you worth hitching your wagon to. It just happened to be that whatever is culturally desirable, you happen to have it, irrespective of character. And this is why when somebody like T.I. says what he's saying, it becomes a little bit contentious. Obviously him being a rapper, surrounded by a lot of females, he's around a lot of artists, a lot of women are probably throwing themselves at him because of the fame and the money. So obviously when someone like T.I. says, women want men who have a lot of women the question is what caliber of man are you okay but taking it on a biological level back in the day men actually were warriors they were conquerors they were educated they actually had things going for them that made them attractive and <laughs> for want of a better term high value men they added value to your life they had wisdom they had careers, they had money, they were going places, and that was what made them desirable. Now, unfortunately, in today's day, in our backwards society, just looking pretty as a man is enough to get you a lot of validation. You could have a bad character, you could not be on your purpose, you could be broke, you could be, you know, down and out, but if you look good, unfortunately too many women look at the superficial and they will desire that and then other women will use that as part of their consensus or their test and say well if everybody is on this guy I like him too even when he is not a high value individual but this is nothing more than biology 
biologically speaking, maybe women don't trust their own judgment, so they look to the group to see which men are being singled out by the most women. And this also speaks to the competitive nature of females. Women often want what other women have, and if they can't have it, they will compete for it. And so when women see that this man has a lot of options, they really desire to overthrow every other option to then be the one who wins out at the end of the day. And going back to the concept of body count, this is why men have an issue a lot of the time with how many men a woman has slept with. But women never ask how many women have you been with for the most part, unless the woman is maybe religious or comes from a very conservative background. And obviously there are issues with a man who is promiscuous. Does he have a lot of baby mamas? Does he have children out there that he doesn't take care of? Why is he not sexually responsible or restrained? I mean, does he have a history of cheating, things like that? I understand all those reasons why a woman may ask about a man's sexual past. But for the most part, women do not care about how many sexual partners a man has had for the simple reason she wants to be able to say, out of all of the, the women he has had, he at the end of the day chose me. And so for that reason, women don't mind competing or even taking away other women's men in order to be able to be the one to say, I have the bragging rights to this male. Well, that's all I've got for this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.